Sister Helen. Good morning. And you are the first Adrian Dominican. I better have my, my. You are the first Adrian Dominican that I've called a liar. <laughs> but that's good because that's what I am. That's, my name is. That's your real name. <laughs> yes. And we use the name Lair now, correct? Yes, in mm -hmm. English. My father did not want us to go to school and be called liars. <laughs> <laughs> well, that saved you from uh, so yes. much bullying, I'm, yes. su I'm sure. Yes. And you were, you were born in Michigan, is that correct? I was born in our family home in, uh, in Chelsea, uh, out on the farm. Uh, my mother had a midwife, and oh. uh, she stayed with the family for a week for all of us. us all of us were born at home except that my two younger siblings were born in the hospital. But, um, and I always dreaded that time because the, uh, she wanted me to be out of the house. And if it was summertime, I stayed out on the porch and played. Otherwise, um, I could, uh, um, I would go and spend time with my dad when he was working in the fields. And I loved that time too. But she didn't want you there during her birth pains. Yes. Yes, because you would hear her suffering or yes. sound like suffering mm -hmm. anyway. And I think the, uh, the, the nurse that she had was sort of abrupt, and I didn't really want to be there. <laughs> well, that was better, yeah. I loved the time with my dad. That was always special. You're outdoors in nature. Yes. Uh, in those days, farming was sort of laid back, and it was all done with horses and Sometimes my dad would put me up on the horse and uh, let me ride, but not for long because it was hard. To, the horses would start getting sweaty and he didn't want me there, so I'd be, he'd take me off and uh, usually he had uh, a wagon or something at the fields with him, so he'd bring his uh, water and things that he needed and I would sit on the wagon and play. Well, the other thing that's very interesting, I suspect you went, uh, Chel when you say Chelsea, I suspect you went to an Adrian Dominican school. No, uh, for grade school, we went to a one room schoolhouse, uh, which was a mile from our home. And when the weather was uh, cooperative, we got to walk back and forth. And I loved that because we got to see so many different things and I'd always look for the birds and. Um, and when the mist spring, the wildflowers, I knew where all the patches of wildflowers were, the, the uh, violets and the um, buttercups and dandelions and all that stuff. It was just so, I go back into those places many times in my thoughts. Beautiful. Um, Helen, in the one school room, did they divide you by grades, or were you all taught at the same time? No, um, the the school was the, the the little the younger children were on one side, and, and the desk as they went to the other side of the school, uh, the classroom were got bigger. And the and in our school, the bigger desks were on the south side, and the little desks were on the north side. And then around the north side of the school, of the room were the their, their little areas they had a sand table and different things that the little children used and then and, and they had a little table and chairs on that side where when they came up for their classes but on the other side of the teacher's desk was a, a bigger area where that when we came uh, for our classes uh, we sat came up and then the back in the background was a chalkboard where she taught us so there was one teacher for one teacher oh my god bless whoever that was yes what a dedication and many times as she had one or two in each grade uh, there'd be about 15 of us and uh and it was uh, it's amazing to to think back and how, how well everything went but uh, i think being country children we were very much more settled down and uh and if teacher said, or mother said, or father said, yes. <laughs> that's exactly what you did. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, what's interesting, Chelsea, a, a one-room schoolhouse, when did the Adrian Dominicans come into your life? They came, um, when I finished uh, eighth grade, I was, um, I could have gone to the public high school, but there was no transportation, no buses at that time. 
and my father had it all figured out that he was going to send me to the academy here in Adrian. And so that was exciting for me, although I was a, a very fearful because I hadn't been away from home any length of time, but I adjusted very well. And um, I just went home for holidays I didn't, and stayed because it was meaning driving back and forth for my father to do pick me up and bring me back. And so I stayed sometime from uh, when I came in September until Thanksgiving sometimes. And I uh, really got to love the sisters. They were always, it was a, just like a, a beautiful setting. And I suspect you lived in a dormitory? Yes, we lived in a dormitory. Was that, it, was that in the academy building or yes, in Madden? Yes, or in Madden. House on third at the, floor. Oh, Madden. And sometimes there were mm -hmm. 23, in the, the Queen of Angels, well, there were 23 beds. And we got along beautifully. And the, a sister had an alcove in the corner with sheets around it. And uh, I bet it, you were peeking under the students would peek under those <laughs> sheets. Well, or. only when she wasn't there. They never did when she was there, mm -hmm. but they would peek around and call. Yes, that was, a, I didn't never venture to that point. That was rather simple living for our sisters, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It had to be difficult mm -hmm. because they, we never saw them unless they were fully dressed. So did you have classes right in Madden then? Yes, all of our classes oh. were on second floor. Oh. So the 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 building we have now was not did not exist at the time you were here. Now the second floor was all dormitories and private rooms, mm -hmm. and then third, um, well, no, the the library was on second floor at the top of the stairs, and then there were just uh, four classrooms there for each of freshmen, sophomore, and so on. So you saw the novices in postulants daily. We saw them at mass mm -hmm. every day. Um, they, uh, the the uh, novices sat on the outside, and postulants were next, and then the high school students were in the middle of the uh, chapel. Did you eat in any dining room that we have now, or did you have a separate dining we room? We had to go f walk over to Ben and Casa. Oh. Every morning and the night we walked oh over to Ben and Casa and back as a group. Mm. Nobody <laughs> went alone. Did you uh, ever go over there for any classes at all? No. No. All mm -hmm. of our classes were in Madden Hall. Not Madden Hall. You have. You were given a very strong religious name, Thomas Albert. I How had, did that come about? I had a brother that was mentally handicapped. He was very bright, but he couldn't speak or express himself. And I had a heart for him, and he used to. Some, and he was a little Dickens. He'd get into trouble, and whenever he got into trouble, he'd come to me, and I would always comfort him. And I, he was very, we get a, had a relationship. And, um, and then I got to learn, too, that St. Thomas and St. Albert were Dominicans, and that's why it kind of edged me on to choose that name. Stro a very, very strong name. And uh, were you ever teaching in outside of Michigan? Um, I did go to St. Killian's in Chicago for two years, and that was my only time outside of Michigan. Mm -hmm. I saw it in Rockwood, in Utica, and um, mostly in, in Michigan. Do you remember anything about Chicago or, or St. Killian's? Yes, I was, uh, it's the first time I had ever gone to a big city like that, because I came from the country, and I was really amazed um, I remember the sisters taking me downtown on the L, and I was just, uh, I just couldn't believe in how, in how the, it ran on the tracks and everything. <laughs> it was just a, a whole experience that was overwhelming. Uh, another planet. Yes. Right. <laughs> Who would be some of the sisters that lived with you there? Um, well, Sister George Marie was the uh, superior. superior um, can't don't recall her name right now, but anyway, she and I'm, I really um, admired her and loved her because she had such a deep respect for all of the sisters, and um, and could and notice their needs and concerns. That's a gift. Yes, that's a gift. And did you have any 
exciting experiences in Utica. I've heard other s sisters having. Well, that was my very, very beginning um, in teaching. And uh, I did enjoy that because it was sort of a country setting. It wasn't really in the metropolis of the city. And uh, that's what I enjoyed a lot about it because out in the backyard there were farmer's fields and I could get close to nature and my home roots by going out there. Were, were you still in the habit at that point? Yes, we mm -hmm. were. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was... Um, it are, was you, are you the sister that had a precocious child ask you if you were male or female? Yes, I uh, <laughs> remember uh, one of the little first graders went home and said, uh, Mommy, my sister's name is Tom Albert. Is she a boy or a girl? Wouldn't that be confusing for, for yes. children? And they, they, I know I had the experience. They tried to look to see if you had hair even. Yes. yes. That would be proof, I guess. Yes. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> yes, that, that must have been a mystery to those little folks. Especially, yes. especially. You love teaching the little ones. Yes, I did. Let the little ones come to me. Uh, I think the the beauty of our sisters who who taught children it was their formation mm -hmm. for the rest yes. of their lives. I mean, educationally and spiritually. Uh, one of the beautiful things is when you got out in the playground that uh, after we had our lunch and the children were out there playing, they just came to us and s surrounded us. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just wanted to touch us. And, and it, was, it was overwhelming. So many of the students say now that what attracted them to the sisters was the sisters' joy. In other words, they didn't have that strict mm -hmm. look on their face. Or did they fear them because of that? I believe that. Mm -hmm. Because, but we were. Uh, when you look back at our life, it was uh, so totally dedicated, and um, we had we knew what we were about, and we knew where we belonged and what to do, and it came to us very simply. At some point in your life, uh, you took a turn in your your ministry. With uh, uh, with Shirley Ruder, was that correct, well, Sister Shirley Ruder? Um, we were closing the schools, and I t knew that I, uh, would, I felt very at home taking care of people. And so I did take a year, and um, I went to school in the morning, and in the afternoon I worked in the hospital. And I got my license to uh, practice uh, as an LPN, mm -hmm. but I, and I was all set up and happy to go when my mother had a stroke. And I was going home on my days off, taking care of her and my blind brothers and getting everything set up and then traveling back to, to Owasso where I was missioned. And um, on my way home one time in February, I can remember talking to myself and I kept saying, you can't do this. It was after three months of doing it. And so I went back that weekend and um, I m made contact with all the people I needed to and I packed up my things and went home and stayed home for 10 years taking care of my mother and my blind brothers. And they were really years of grace because uh, there were so many times when um, they had, they were, my brothers were kind of, um, they always liked jokes and things like that and they'd pull things off on me. <laughs> and I, at first I'd, I'd get, kind of angry, but then I said, no, this is the right way to do it. I should just <laughs> laugh and enjoy it, and it, it came out very well. Were they born blind? Uh, not totally blind. They had stigmatism, which my mother also had it, and it's a, a, um, inherited, and it, they can see some, and, and gradually that uh, blind, uh, blindness comes upon them. Uh, it fade, their sight mm -hmm. fades away. So they had that beginning, to, and so they did very well on the farm. And they could uh, get around outside even amazingly. I asked my brother one time, how do you always get to that barn door without missing? And he says, well, I can hear the cows inside moving around. Oh. The, uh, that was a gift, was it not? Not only for yourself, but for your a family because yes. of the, their disabilities. Yes. How did you 
manage, well, I guess you were the chief cook and bottle washer then, weren't you? Well, when I was taking care of my mother, yes. But mm -hmm. mother wasn't, um, uh, I could, she was up and I'd be dressed and, and um, around, but she couldn't, um, you know, she couldn't work and help. Mm -hmm. But um, she always, and I loved that because she, she'd, um, and she loved being with the, my brothers. It kept our family together. Well, how did you uh, get around the, the town or go out? Did you have to walk places to? No, uh, our family farm was six miles from town. And uh, my brother did get me a vehicle that I could drive so I could take my mother to the doctors and my brothers and do all mm -hmm. of that, which was, um, it was a blessing all the way. Um, and it wasn't, uh, he took my mother's money and bought the vehicle so that I would be able to, she would be, you know, mm -hmm. first class. I wanted, yeah. to, we wanted that to be, because mm -hmm. it was her money. Mm -hmm. Well, that was a lot of uh, transferring a, a, a woman who had a stroke and your blind brothers. Um, was a wheelchair involved in in No, my your... blind brothers did not need a wheelchair, but my mother did. Um, so I had a, a, a friend uh, saw an ad in the paper with somebody who had an, a wheelchair and, um, and he took me to Ann Arbor to get it. And um, she had two of them and my friend says, get both of them. You can put one in the trunk of your car and you'll have it there. You won't have to put it in and out all the time. So that was a blessing, you know. You, and, you must have strong arms at this well, point. Well, my here. brothers, my <laughs> blind brothers were big help there too. They could, they loved to do that. Yeah. and. I'd let them push my mother too, and I just guided, and that was a, mm -hmm. a feather in their cap. They just loved it. Now they're all deceased at this yes, point. Yes, every my uh, all of my old brothers are gone except my youngest brother, Donald, who is uh, at the farm, runs the farm, and he's a, a natural farmer, loves it. And my sister uh, lives in Florida. Did she as attend the academy also? Yes, she did, but only her senior year. Mm -hmm. And she's happily married in Florida, and I suspect has some beautiful children. Yes, yeah, she had three sons, and now she's got grandchildren, and she's doing very well. And they, co your brother comes to visit you too, doesn't he? he my brother comes, yes. yes. How long have you been at the DLC, Helen? Um, I, uh, I came last fall in uh, September. And how has life been for you here? Wonderful. I love uh, being... Uh, free to go to the chapel when I what I like uh, need to or whatever and I uh, I just love love living here it's it's a total blessing I've never had the privilege of living on a farm and in some respects I'm very jealous of the women who have what were some of the memories that you hold deep in your heart about living on the farm well one of them is um, in the spring of the year, we'd always get baby chicks from the hatchery. And I loved, and they had to be kept in what we called the brooder house. And they had to be heat in the brooder house. And we could go out there and it would be snowing outside because sometimes we'd get, try to get them earlier then they would, they would be big enough so that when the weather got good, you could let them outside. And um, it was just, uh, and we always had them caged in and so we could walk around and we had chairs because my brother and my dad and mother we, we'd go out there and sit and watch the chickens and it was just something uh, when the weather was too cold to be out and you could do it and we just loved that. Um, I remember and, and to watch the ch chickens interact is another thing and you know so there would be little roosters that would come around and dominate. <laughs> Did you have any pets? Oh yes, um, we had pet lambs. We usually pet uh, what? Pet lambs. Lambs. Oh, little yes. lambs. The oh. uh, um, sometimes uh, uh, the ewes, the female would have uh, triplets, and she couldn't take care of them all. So my my father would always uh, uh, have a pen aside in the in the sheep barn and uh, keep them there, and we had to feed feed them milk. Uh, twice a day, and uh, and when they got bigger, they finally when they were able to eat, uh, they were joined the other sheep. But it was a it was a uh, I love that because there's something about a lamb that's 
so gentle. And to feel the heartbeat of a, a lamb, too, must yes. be a thrill. Yes. Um, you, you knew creation spirituality from a very young age. You were so mm -hmm. close to yes. mother, mother Nature. I, I do recall that when you were at the Academy, you, you were influenced by Sister Marcella Gardner. Yes, and Sister... How did that come about? And Sister Martin Clare was my freshman homeroom teacher. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I really admired her. Sister Ann Thomas was a little bit more harsh and demanding, but I learned to respect her, and I knew that uh, she, was, uh, she was always uh, challenging us, and uh, she was at our, for our best interest, and I learned to, learned to respect her very much. But Sister Marcella and Sister Martin Clare were two um, that I really admired the most in my uh, high school years. And was one of those sisters what we call your sponsor when you Sister entered? Sister Marcella, Marcella was, yes. Yeah. And it was nice because she was mis or she was at the academy, and I got to see her often. Although I couldn't talk to her, it mm -hmm. was always nice to wave at her. And, mm -hmm. And uh, may I go back to Chelsea? Uh, you were probably active in the church there in Chelsea. What did, I forget the name of the St. Mary's. St. Mary's. Did you know the Weber family? Yes. Genevieve uh, Weber. Mother and Genevieve and uh, Sister Mary Frances. Mm -hmm. They didn't live really close to us, but we knew their family, and I knew the, the Weber sisters. Mm -hmm. And how did Father Bill... Turner come into your life? Well, he, uh, um, I was away on mission, so I didn't get to, to know him until I went home to take care of my mother, but he was a real support and uh, seemed to um, almost foresee needs and was right there to help. And uh, anytime I, you know, he even if he was in the neighborhood, he'd stop by. Mm -hmm. A real, um, uh, I, a real pastor. Pastor. Uh, from your fourth floor room in Maria, are you fascinated by what is going on uh, uh, in on the earth here in Adrian? Can you see the permaculture outside your window? Yes, I and, and I really enjoy it. Although sometimes I have to remind myself, you're not uh, you're not as young as you used you're to be. You, you enjoy, but don't. Yeah. Don't start digging. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> well, thank you for this time with you, Helen. It's been, been delightful. Do you have fi any final words you would like to say to those who are, are listening about life in general? I would like to say that I am very grateful to be an Adrian Dominican sister and a part of this uh, congregation. And uh, um, God has been very good, not only to me, to all of us in every way I can ever think of. God Thank bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you.